thank you for tuning in. We're going to be painting, I originally just said an orange, but I found this uh, picture here. Oops. I found this picture here of uh, Clementine and another half Clementine and then a single piece. So I think we're probably going to be able to get through all of that in the uh, three hours. So I'll just walk you through the colors that we're going to go with. I mean this, if you don't have all of these colors, uh, that's not a big deal at all. At minimum, you could do this painting with uh, white and orange. But if you have, if you don't have orange, uh, and you have a yellow and a red, you could mix those those two together, the yellow and the red, uh, to get an orange. But at minimum, white and orange. Ideally, we're going to use um, the orange, the, the yellow, and the red. Uh, and then I have some other other ones here. This this color here is is a cadmium red light. So that's basically somewhere between cadmium red and cadmium orange. But you don't need that. You can mix that if you like. And then this brown up here, and that brown is called raw sienna. And uh, we're going to be using that as a kind of a wash for the background. So if you are painting along with me, please, uh, we're, um, please, um, yeah, if, drop any questions you have. Um, if I go too quickly, let me know. Um, the uh, if you just drop in the comments. Uh, otherwise, I'll I'll try to do it at a let's say a, at a beginner's level pace. I think that would be probably best for everyone. Uh, also, keep in mind that this is only my second uh, painting class. Usually, when I'm painting, uh, it's just it's just a live on on TikTok or something like that, and it's just a demonstration. It's not an actual class. So um, yeah, if you do have uh, any questions or concerns, just drop them in the comments and and uh, we'll figure that out. Now, I'm not painting on a canvas today. Uh, this is canvas paper. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is really great for practicing your painting. So Canson is the maker. Oil and acrylic is really good. Basically, just think about it like it's thick paper. Um, I'll show you what the texture looks like. If, if the, I can get a zoom going. There we go. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of, it's, it's got a cool sort of woven texture. I think it's meant to simulate a canvas, but um, pretty good. Uh, and you get 24 sheets for about 10 bucks. Um, and that's much, much uh, better value than trying to paint on canvases every time. This is just going to be a little study. So um, we are going to go, we're going to do uh, maybe more of that academic I think more of an academic style. So we'll start with a with a wash, a very thin wash, and then um, draw the basic shapes, the outline. Um, this is our reference material. We're going to be using this. We'll draw the basic shapes on top of the wash with um, a very kind of diluted uh, brown or sienna, and then. Once we have the proportions down, we'll start building the form and uh, building it up with uh, identifying the midtones and the highlights and the lowlights, where the shadows are, where the changes in hue and the changes in value are. I'll walk you through everything, and then hopefully that way, uh, after the uh, the video, you'll be able to figure it out. And uh, if I do go too quickly, and you sort of just decide to stop uh, painting on your side, um, don't worry, immediately after this live stream, I'm going to upload the uh, the video. So you'll be able to replay it and pause and go at your own pace. Um, so yeah, don't, uh, don't be too uh, concerned if, if it does go too quickly. So uh, first step, we're going to, we're going to do a, a step called toning the canvas. So to tone the canvas, you're going to take a, a large brush. Um, this, it doesn't matter what size. 
to something maybe flat. This is this happens to be a filbert brush. Filbert brushes are have round edges, you see, but they're flat like that. Um, you know, this is a what is this? A twenty four. It doesn't really matter what size, but um, we're gonna go with this color up here, which is uh, raw sienna. Sorry, I should step back. I should I should show you the colors. Um, okay, raw sienna. This is oil paint, by the way. You can do this demonstration with acrylic if you want, because it's going to be quick enough. We're going to finish the whole thing in under three hours. Um, uh, you could even do it with pencil crayons if you like. Raw sienna is just a brown that has a little bit of red in it. Um, so a, a reddish brown, you call that. We're going to use this for our background. Um, yeah, yeah, you can use burnt umber. So to tone your canvas, typically this is what uh, you would use burnt umber, raw umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and then uh, Rembrandt even used sap green. The idea with toning your canvas is that you wanna get rid of the white because white will create an optical illusion and it, and it will make it harder for you to evaluate the, the value, the, the what's light and what's dark. So. Any, any color is good as long as it brings the white into like a mid-level. So the reason why we don't use gray or blue or anything like that is that usually our subjects are organic subjects, you know, people or plants or so on. So if you use uh, browns like umbers and siennas, then usually you will, um, that it will create your, um, Browns are warm, so your image will be warmer underneath. It has a, has a warm glow. Because remember, oil paint can be um, translucent and transparent. Um, but yes, you can use any any mid-tone at all. And so yeah, let's let's start with, um, yeah, sorry, we'll go, we'll keep going here. Um, all of these are, are cadmium colors. Uh, cadmium yellow is this one here. Yeah, acrylic's perfect. Yeah, ac acrylic will work. If you have um, slow drying medium, you may want to use a, uh, a, a little bit of slow drying medium and mix it in with your acrylic paint because there will be quite a lot of blending in this and uh, at, with acrylic, you're at risk of the paint drying too quickly. So, uh, but yeah, if you have slow dry medium, uh, mix some in. So cadmium yellow, that's going to be for some of the highlights, or of course the white for highlights. That's titanium white. The reason why we go with titanium white and not zinc white is that titanium white is um, uh, opaque and it has high tinting power. So we have um, cadmium red light. This is a color between cadmium red and cadmium orange, which are here and here. Um, Cadmium, by the way, all this, you see this cadmium, cadmium, cadmium. Cadmium is just a, a metal. Like you can go into the periodic table of elements and you'll see cadmium there. And uh, it's used to produce mostly warm colors uh, like yellow and orange and red. And cobalt is the opposite. That's the one that's used in the cold colors. Um, okay, so we have three, ca three cadmiums um, and uh, raw sienna. So what I'm gonna do is uh, the idea is just to cover the whole thing as evenly as possible. Um, and you don't want it to be thick paint at all. So I'm just going to dip my brush. Uh, you can either, if you're painting with oil paint, you can either dip it in odorless mineral spirits or turpentine or turpenoid. All of those are called uh, thinners. Or you can just dip it in linseed oil. I'm not even using any thinners. I'm just dip my brush in linseed oil. And uh, that way I can get it nice and thin. You see how thin it is. I'm gonna even go a little bit, little bit thinner. So you're just looking to get rid of the white. And um, And uh, I'm just kind of scrubbing it into the canvas or the 
I mean, it's canvas paper, it's textured. And if you think about the, the canvas or your paper, it's not flat exactly, it's bumpy. So when you're doing this layer, you kind of have to scrub the color in and because you have to get it on, on, the, on both sides of the bumps. So on the undersides of the bumps and the, and the top sides of the bumps. And you think about them like little mountains and valleys um, and the object is to cover, get rid of all of the white. Now you, you'd be using this color either with umber or, or, or sienna. You'd be toning your canvas the same way no matter what su your subject was. Uh, if you're doing a landscape or a portrait uh, or, you know, a still life like we're doing here. So I'm, I'm just, it, it, it's not crucial to get it perfectly uniform. We are, of course, going to be painting over this whole thing, but um, if you can, if you can just get it as uniform as possible in, a, and typically this is a pretty quick step. So that's why I use a big brush. After this, you uh, you finish this step. I'm almost. I'm going to be finished in about a minute here. If you guys need any extra time, just drop it in the comments. Otherwise, I will be uh, proceeding. If you uh, if you are painting along, I don't want you to get too far behind and, and miss something. So yeah, but I am relying on you to let me know. All right, so just going all the way up and all the way down. That's going to take out a lot of the creases. Perfect coverage is not super important. Okay. Now let's have a look at the reference material. This is a, almost done. Okay, yeah, take your time. Let's give it a few seconds. This, I'll just talk about the purpose of this layer. So this is, and we've just toned our canvas and the purpose of this layer is to now, after we've gotten rid of all the white, we're not gonna be distracted by that, by the, the white itself, won't distract us from choosing our tone. So then now the purpose of this next step is to find the correct proportions and um, you know, you have to remember that when these techniques were developed, they didn't have projectors. Well, they sort of did. They had the uh, camera obscura, but um, but for the most part, they tried to work without projectors. And, and there were other things like the grid technique and some carbon uh, transfers. There were different ways to get your image perfectly transferred. But for the most part, you would use the next step to try to work out the proportions and the composition. So in order to do that, uh, you're gonna get either a small or a medium brush. Let's say, well, I'm gonna use a number four. So I guess somewhere between small and medium brush. This one happens to be a flat, but it can be, you can use, you can use a filbert or a round if you want. Um, and the goal of this step now is to draw the goal of this step is to draw our uh, reference image and just to get some proportion. So uh, before we start, let's just look at the, at the big shapes. First of all, obviously we know that an orange is spherical. So that's gonna be, and we're gonna do a big circle here. We'll draw, draw the full circle. We don't have to worry about what's overlapping. Get the full circle down. Uh, here's another big shape. This looks like a U and then basically a cross. We'll worry about that little dip afterwards. And then you can see that it's 
slightly higher on the left side than the right. So it's gonna be a U shape like this. Um, this one is pretty much circular. And then just basically two U's with a, little, a couple of extra pieces, but so not quite a circle. We have, it's a circle, but then with two lines here and then another circle. So I think the, those are the basic shapes that we're gonna get down now. And just lots of circles. Now, um, when it comes to using references, I should say that this is painting and it's completely fine to make alterations, to use your instincts, however you see fit. So you, if you want to omit that one or you want to move it over, or you want to make something bigger. Uh, yeah, that's that's all fair play. Just it's uh, that's all up to you. Use uh, use some of that burnt umber again. We're not going into the yellows or reds or oranges yet. Just using some of that burnt umber. And you can thin it down if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to use the point of my brush. I have paint on both sides though, so I have actually two points on this brush. And instead of holding your brush like this, like a pencil, if you do that, you're going to get too tight and you're going to do details. I recommend you hold your brush like a wand, like a magic wand. Yeah, and that way you draw more with your arm and less with your fingers and wrist. If you hold your, your brush like this and the closer you hold it, the tighter your, your drawing will be and the more inclined you will be to draw details. But if you hold it further back and you hold it like a, like a wand, you'll be much less inclined to get in there and draw details. We don't want to see any of the details at this point, just the major shapes. So let's start with that big orange uh, on this side. Don't worry if it's not an even circle. Remember, none of this is final details. It's all going to be painted over. So there's, there's, no, there's no such thing as making mistakes at this point. Um, if you do make a mistake and you really don't want it there, you have two choices with oil paint. You can either paint over it or you can wipe it off with a rag. Okay, always have a rag handy. Uh, you can use paper towel if you like. Make sure you always dispose of it correctly, but um, all right, there's our circle for the big one. And now we're gonna do this. This guy looks about here. And then it comes down. It's basically a U shape, right? We can make adjustments. Just um, you kind of make get a rough idea right now. It's like doing a rough draft uh, for uh, if you've ever written a, a, an essay or a story, anything like that, you don't start with, you don't, you don't just jump to the final product. You, you make a rough draft. So that's the idea. We can make this bigger, smaller, squishy or anything you like uh, afterwards. And, and again, it doesn't have to be um, perfect. So, and then another circle. You see that it doesn't quite, these two things don't quite touch each other. go it's like a circle and then there's a straight line straight line and then another circle and it's almost as low okay next those are our major lines well I guess we could kind of put in this too That's, those are the major lines drawn out now. You can start looking for any uh, major secondary lines. These, these are all of these lines that we have here. Was, that's called the primary contour. And the primary contour are the, are the lines. The primary means first. They're the first lines, the most important lines. They are the lines that separate the objects from the background. And when you say, what are the primary contours? All right, well, these, what we've done here, those are the primary contours. The, the secondary contour lines is what you want to look for next. 
And when it comes to secondary contour lines, that those are major lines that are inside the object, but they don't separate the object from the background. They separate elements inside the object. So like this, these lines here, for example. This is primary contour because it's separating the object from the background. This is secondary contour because it's separating two parts, two major parts uh, inside the object. So let's, let's have a look. Um, there are no secondary contour lines in the big orange, you know, maybe the stem, you could kind of call that secondary contour. But, uh, and then in this little slice, not really. If you want, you could kind of make some indications of this maybe radial pattern, it's unnecessary. Uh, but these are really important secondary contour lines. You can see one slice, two, three, at least three lines. So let's get those down. There's one, one down the middle. And then he kind of bends around this, this slice, this one here, bottom slice is the same size as this one. So kind of, if you can use that as a bit of a guide, ultimately it doesn't matter, but uh, it's fine. We're still using this, um, raw sienna. We're going to do raw sienna for the whole thing until we draw all of the primary and all of the secondary contour lines. Um, there's, a, there's a bump here that I didn't draw before. I mean, that's, pr that's pretty much it. Um, and then we'll draw the top slice now. This is a clementine. And with clementines, there's a, a slight uh, bend. See this here? Not quite straight across. It goes in like a smiling face. Uh, and then up. Uh, so that's it. Let me just say uh, to the 11 of you, by the way, that, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining uh, live. If you, I know it's quite late if you're joining from Europe. Um, so depending on how these uh, next few weeks go, I may end up uh, doing a, a morning session if there's enough interest, but, uh, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, and then the leaf, there's no real secondary contour lines, maybe this part down the middle. That's it now, that's finished. We have all of the primary and secondary contour lines. Is there anything to do on the background? Mm, not really. All right. The background on this reference image is pretty blank. And we do see, we have some shadows underneath here and here. And then back here, there's some shadows. Those are going to have to be addressed. So we can kind of rough those in now. I think that will be fine. Um, down here. Again, there are, there are no final lines. Don't, don't worry about... Uh, if you're getting your details. A little bit uh, wrong or anything like that because you haven't even done any details yet. All right. So what have we done so far? For those of you just joining, we've toned the canvas with a Sienna tone. We just mixed it down with some linseed oil or paint thinner, covered the whole thing. Then also with the same color with that Sienna, and a smaller brush, I've just drawn out the basic shapes, starting with the primary contour lines, which are the lines that separate the, the objects from the background, and then moving to the secondary contour lines, which are the lines that separate major elements within the objects. Now you'll see that I have part of this background orange, this line here. I don't really need that or want it. So I'm gonna just uh, take a rag and I'm gonna pull off some of the paint. Now, what I like to do when I'm pulling off paint is just wrap the rag around my finger and kind of hold on to it like this. I'm using my finger almost like an implement. Uh, I'm just gonna remove some of those lines that I don't want. 
that are behind. It just it just makes the uh, the ob the objects a little bit easier to understand. Okay, so you can see that this the large orange, the circular orange, came all the way. I just I just erased those. Now, while I have the rag, it's a great time to do the next step. I'm going to look at the reference image and try to identify where the light source is. Um, and so those of you who are brand new to art, brand new to drawing, a light source is, um, that's, that's, that's what you say when you, when you mean where is the light coming from. Um, it could be a candle or a flashlight or the sun or anything, but you try to look at the object and see where are there any bright spots and if so, where is where is the light coming from? What is the source of the light? Well, it's pretty easy with this one because you can see this spot here. There's another one up here, but um, the main spot is here. And so we know that the light's not coming from this side, it's coming from that side. And it's coming from the front. It's not coming from behind the orange. So the light source is coming from the top left, hitting it like that. Now, why is that important? It's important because where the light is coming from, the direction of the light and the strength of the light will determine our shadows. And in order for us to create the illusion of three dimensions, we need parts of the object to appear light and parts of the object to appear dark. Even though the whole thing is in two dimensions, we're going to have to make it seem like it's in three dimensions. We do that by making some parts light and some parts dark. So our light source is here. I'm going to take that rag and try to rub off the paint in the areas with a light source. There's a little bit by the stem. And then there's just these um, random pieces here. I'm just gonna scrub the whole thing, that's fine. And maybe around the top here. That part's not really important. The important part was this. I wanted to take off as much paint as I could right there. Um, don't worry about these white strips here. We're going to put those in at the very last. They're going to be really thick white paint, and that will make the orange pop. Uh, okay, so I think that's that's pretty much it. We have the most important part of this step was to establish the relationships between the objects. It's a fairly simple composition, and we're when we have a reference. If you don't have a reference, then it can it can get a little more difficult uh, as you you know draw arms and legs and in different positions and and uh, you're rubbing things off and then drawing them back on it can get a little more difficult but uh, that's that's totally fine uh, where we are right now what's the next step well historically traditionally the next step would be to create a layer called the chrysale layer uh, another way you would, another thing, way you would call it would be the dead layer. And it's called the dead layer because you basically take away all the color that you've already put down by creating a black, gray, and white painting. You do all of the tones or the values. Value is something, uh, it's a measure of what parts are light and what parts are dark. Like this is darker in the, in the, a little bit away from the light, the shadows are darker. And then this is lighter, so that's a lighter value. It's a middle value and a dark value. But you would do those in all grays, and then you would let it dry completely. It takes after a few weeks. Then you would start glazing nearly transparent colors, layer by layer, building them up layer by layer. That's the traditional method, the, the so-called Flemish seven layer method. We're not going to do that this time whatsoever. We're going to do a, a different kind of technique with oil paint called uh, Alla Prima. And the Alla Prima technique 
is a technique where we paint, instead of glazing, we do blending. And we do blending right on the canvas. So it's a little bit dirtier, it's much faster, and uh, yeah, it's, it's my personal favorite technique. So we're gonna do that. I like to start with the mid-tones, but you can start light and go to dark. You can start dark and go to light. I like to start in the middle and then go both in both directions, light and dark. I'm gonna use that same brush, that number four uh, square brush, but it doesn't really matter if you have something like, you could use a filbert, that would work perfectly well. Um, yeah, I might as well use a filbert. This is a little bit bigger, it's a number 10. I'm just gonna dip it into my linseed oil and wipe it on a rag. Make sure it's clean from last time I used it. seems to be all right. So this is a filbert. Um, if, by the way, if you have, if you, if you're still pretty new to, uh, you know, what are the shapes of brushes and what are they used for, etc. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of brushes. That's a round, that's a, that's a flat, you know, sometimes people call it square, but a, a bright would be with the bristles about halfway. This is a filbert, but there are lots of other kinds of, of there's a fan, um, brush and uh, yeah there's lots uh, I have a, a full YouTube video on all of the different kinds of brushes and what you would do with them um, this one the filbert is the kind of workhorse it's the one that's the I think the most versatile brush because you have it's wide like this so you have that width that you can just like a, on a flat brush you can use um, but the edges are you're not pointy like a flat brush not like that. See, that has the two edges that you can use for drawing, basically. Um, you don't have that with the filbert, but that means you can blend much more easily. And then the beauty of the filbert, of course, see, this is a round brush. It's the same in all directions. If you rotate it, I can rotate the filbert and I basically create a round brush. So I can draw very thin lines with it as well. So yeah, really excellent, versatile brush is the filbert. Okay, let's go to mid-tones. I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna use just, I'm just gonna go with cadmium orange and titanium white. More of the cadmium orange and a little bit of titanium white, but not much. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of blending right there. It's not, it's pretty thick. Cadmium generally is quite thick because it's an opaque paint as opposed to a lot of the greens and blues that from cobalt, they, they tend to be uh, transparent. But cadmiums are typically opaque um, and a little bit thicker. You're not gonna get a lot of coverage. You might wanna just dip your brush in a little bit of linseed oil if, it, if you feel like it's too thick. But this is just a kind of an experience thing. You're just, tr you're just getting a feeling. Now, generally speaking, you, when you work, you work from thin paint, and as the painting develops, you get thicker and thicker and thicker with the paint. And you work with general shapes, and as the painting develops, you get more and more specific with your paintings, so with your, with your details. So it's thin to thick, general to specific. And the brush sizes are big to small. Don't start with a small brush. That's a different technique. Okay, we have a nice mid-tone orange here, and it's just two colors, cadmium orange and titanium white. Let's find the mid-tones here. We wanna stay away from that area there. That's our lightest area. So it's gonna be mid-tones all the way around there, and not down there. That's gonna be reserved for darker. So I'm basically just gonna do a circle all the way around this highlight. You're gonna have some uh, brown still on your painting. Don't worry about that at all. Um, browns are actually in the orange family. And uh, that's just part of, that's just part of an oil painting. When you do yours, if it's too dark, what do you do? We'll just go back, make adjustments. 
by adding a little bit more white to it. Not too much though. You don't want to, you don't want to get to your highlight color. Um, think about it painting like a conversation. Every time you touch the canvas with your brush, you are answering the last question, but you're also asking another question. And so every time you answer, so here, we just on this, we basically asked a question now. Now we have to answer this question. How we answer it is going to depend, that's going to determine where this conversation goes. So, you know, one question might be, well, is, is that too light? Is it too dark? Is it too white? If it's too white, I can go with a little bit of yellow. Let's try that. And go yellow, some more yellow in there. All right, by putting some yellow in, now I've asked a different kind of question. So that's, that's just kind of how it goes. And as you paint, you develop the ability to ask and answer uh, with more confidence. And I think that's, that's the biggest part about painting in a, with a certain style, developing a certain style. Um, so, okay, we have this orange. Um, now, that's pretty much all the mid-tone for this orange. What do I want to do? Do I want to do all of the mid-tones now for all three objects or just paint one orange and then paint that one and then paint that one. Yeah, there's no real answer here. That's up to you. Um, I think what I'm going to do is because here we're painting peel and here we're painting the inside of the orange, that's how I'm gonna split it up. I'll do all the peel first and then I'll move on to the insides because the textures are gonna be different. This one has these little dark spots everywhere. This one has white lines. So let's just paint all of this. Um, okay, so from the mid, we can let's go into the light areas. I'm gonna go um, cadmium orange, titanium white, and some of that cadmium yellow. Don't go right to white. Always, always hold back on that. Reserve it. Um, if you want to do extreme. Trying your techniques with edible colors. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Now you'll have to let me know. I don't know what the pigments are going to be like with edible colors, but yeah, that would be incredible. Um, now, if you're really good at color matching, you're gonna you're gonna match it here. So I have cadmium yellow, cadmium uh, orange, and white, and you just keep blending it with your brush. You don't blend it with a palette knife because we're doing alla prima. Alla prima is supposed to be quick and spontaneous. You can blend here, but you're really supposed to be blending here on the canvas. It moves things along quickly. So blend it with your brush. And if you wanna be meticulous about your color, when you have it on your brush, you then hold it to your reference and say, all right, how close am I? Because I'm colorblind, I can't tell you how close I am, but I know Theoretically, what colors go into an orange? So I assume this is pretty close. But that's okay if it's not. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. So let's just go with uh, that highlight. You're going to get lighter and lighter as you go toward that. There's going to be one spot that's going to be the, the lightest. So let me just fill in this whole circle. Don't worry about blending it with the other parts just yet. I filled in that whole circle. Now, take your rag and wipe off all of the excess on your brush. This is a really important step. So I've just taken all the paint, I've moved it over to the canvas. Now it's important to wipe off your brush with a rag. Okay. Now, the filbert brush is ready for blending. There's already so much paint here and here. I don't need extra paint. I don't want to introduce any more paint. So I have pretty much a dry brush. And what we're going to do is move around the edge where the light orange meets the, the mid-tone. I'm going to keep moving around. 
this edge and blend the two tones together with these short, uh, quick blends. You can do little circles if you want. You're going to develop your own technique as you as, as you uh, paint and discover things. But I like to do little circles. Don't go too far into either area. Don't go right into the middle because um, you don't want to pull some too much of the darker orange into the middle. But also you don't want to move too many of the highlights all the way to the edge. The goal is to make that line between the two colors disappear. Paint in the direction of the object. So if we're going around, then you want to paint, paint uh, in the same contour. And that way, if you leave any of the brush strokes, which you can do, you know, you don't have to do realism. But if you want to leave any of the brush strokes on the canvas, then if they're in the direction of the object like this, the orange goes down like that, and down this way. If they're in the direction, then it will make your object uh, look much better than if they're in the opposite direction. Some kind of uh, optical dissonance that happens if you paint a perpendicular to the contour of the object. And there's another uh, highlight up here by the stem. And I haven't put it in, so let's try that now. I'm gonna go with a little bit more white on my brush than I normally would, because there's already a lot of orange here. So I'm just gonna paint it in, not, not worry about blending it at the moment. And then also this highlight here. Right in the middle. Looks like it wasn't enough. Going with a little bit more uh, yellow. It was getting, it's kind of getting uh, too white. Orange and white don't really mix well. It's not like magenta and white or red and white that uh, when you mix those colors with white, they're just really beautiful. Um, mixing a color with white, by the way, is called it's called tinting the color. And um, yeah, magenta, dioxazine purple mixed with white is just. Yeah, incredible, glorious. Uh, but oranges, oranges don't really go well with white for some reason. Anyway, that's why I add a little bit of yellow. You can do that because yellow and orange are analogous colors. And what analogous colors, what that means is that they are beside each other on the color wheel. And, uh, so they're sort of cousins. You can think about it like that. I'm just gonna go back in now put in this highlight over in the middle. So the highlight that I've done is a little too bright. I mean, I am gonna blend it out slightly just by touching it and letting it mix in with the colors that are already there. Okay, let's have a look at what's going on with the rest of this orange. So we have the, the highlight hitting this side. As the object moves down, curls down this way, as you go toward the bottom of the orange, um, it's going to get darker. So that's decreasing in value. And it's also going to um, decrease in chroma. Chroma is a measure of the color saturation level. So what we're gonna do is use some of the brown that's in our lines here. I'm going to mix that in with the orange. That's going to decrease the chroma. Um, now I'm going to go with a fairly dark color for this shadow down here. Put a dark, I'll start darker than I need and then bring it up and bring it lighter. It's just, uh, I, I find that overshooting and then uh, making corrections is a better, for me anyway, is a better technique than undershooting because undershooting always comes off as playing it safe, but overshooting 
you can see how far you can push it and then you can just bring it back. So let's overshoot. We're gonna go with some of the brown that's already here. I'm gonna mix that in with a little bit of this cadmium red light. I'll just pull some of that thin brown in there as well. And that again is to decrease the chroma because the object is rotating away from the light. Uh, you. Ah, and then I'm gonna have some of this cadmium orange because that's the main color. So it's three, three colors here, cadmium red, brown, or, uh, sienna, and cadmium uh, orange. This is the shadow. I'm using some of the brown that's already on the canvas. Notice I haven't put any details in the orange yet. All these little spots on the orange, don't put those in. You will be tempted um, because especially when somebody walks past your work and you, you want them to think, oh yeah, that, that looks good, whatever. Don't be tempted by putting in details before uh, before you have the major elements in. That's that's one of the big kind of no-nos. You, you always want to work from general to specific. Specific means details. That comes right at the end. Um, and why, what, you know, I always like to give the why, not just the what. The reason why you don't want to put the details in is that let's say I paint this in and then afterwards I decide, oh, it's too, it's too dark or it's too light but I've painted a bunch of details on top of it. Now I have to redo the whole thing and, it, and it's just an efficiency issue really. So you just wanna to try to uh, paint in a way that is most the most efficient way in the event that you make a, a mistake. If you don't make a mistake, then go ahead, start at the top and just do details and finish it like a photocopier, just line by line. But it's up to you. There's uh, when it comes to painting, those are all just, of course, recommendations. There are no official rules. I'm just uh, telling you what the what an academic uh, painting instructor would tell you. Uh, so here's the leaf here. Uh, there's going to be a little shadow underneath the leaf. I'm just going to put that in now. And then carry on with this shadow down here. I'm not really scrubbing the paint in at all. It's just still very light at this point. And now I'm gonna go with some cadmium orange to complete the darker mid-tones. I'm blending those together. If you go too light or too dark, uh, you'll just have to make adjustments as you go. Remember, we're painting a, a we're painting a sphere here, basically. So, on this cadmium orange, I'm just going to bring it down and let it blend in with the brown that's already present, and that's going to slightly decrease the saturation level, the chroma, which will be appropriate considering the object is rolling away from us down here. Now what's going on here above the, or I'll just give you a second to, to catch up. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more white here because it's just a little too strong. Again, let me know if you, in the comments, if you're if you need more time on any of these steps. The blending is uh, obviously one of the things that can take a lot of time if you're not used to it. I would recommend, if you can see how I'm, how I'm holding the brush, when you blend, really try to avoid having your brush perpendicular to your canvas. Try to bring it down as parallel to the canvas as possible so you're using almost the side you can see how, how I'm holding my brush. It's almost parallel to my canvas as I'm blending, very gently. Making these, uh, you know, you can just barely, barely feel the canvas 
that's how gently I'm moving it. And uh, yeah, the brush is nearly parallel. So if you, and you know, you don't want to blend with the brush perpendicular to the canvas, you're just gonna create lines. And the whole idea of blending is to, uh, is to uh, get rid of the lines. A little bit more red light, burn sienna, and, and uh, so I have our, we have our shadow color here. And the stem goes down, I'm gonna paint the shadow from the stem. I'm gonna put the stem in too. It's gonna to go straight with this uh, sienna and just make a line. I'll go thicker. Just so I can see. Um, there's part of the orange back there that I, I wanna get in before we move on, just behind the stem. Okay, this, the you can see where the stem uh, connects to the orange. The, it sort of dips in a little bit, or I have to reflect that dip uh, on the other side. It's darker. Okay, now that I have all of that down, I'm just looking over here and realizing that I would like it to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go back with um, some more brown and cad, and cad red light. And make it even darker. I'm still keeping it quite vibrant. You can see that the, our orange is much more vibrant than the orange. Uh, in the reference, and that's because we're not using as much white in the mix. If you want to dull it down and make it more of a realistic orange, um, then you use a lot more white. And it's pretty rare to find things that are extremely vibrant in nature. So things have a lot more white in them than, than uh, they first appear to have. Okay, that's that's the end of the peel. Now there are there are going to be parts of it that are much more detailed. I'm just going to put the highlight back in here. The parts of it that are going to be much more detailed, and uh, I don't know. We can either do the detail in the peel right now, or we can move on to the other parts. What do you, any suggestions in the comments? If not, uh, I'll just decide. Okay, so um, I guess there's a little bit of a lag, but um, let's, let's go ahead and just finish up this orange peel then. What I would like to show, I'm just gonna yeah, pull this off. Let's have a look at the details. You can see, it's focusing, there we go. So you can see that there, there are spots on the reference material orange, but they're flat, they're, they're not bumps, they're just spots. And they're the same color just one darker shade. So that's what we have to go with. Little spots. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of spots there. We're not going to paint all the spots. Sorry, I lost it for a second. Um, we're not gonna paint all the spots uh, because we're not doing hyper-realism. If we were hyper-realists, we would have to paint not only all of the spots, but you have to paint them exactly as you see them. We're not doing hyper-realism, we're doing realism. And realism means that uh, the objects will look like the thing that they refer to in real life up to a point. But as soon as you get closer, um, then you can see the brush strokes and you can see that it's a painting and so on. And the colors 
don't have to be exact, not like photorealism or hyperrealism. Everything has to be exact. With this kind of painting, uh, it doesn't. And, you know, I just think that's better because the pressure is off. Let's take a round brush this time. So we're going to put away the filbert. We're not going to do, this is our blending brush. Think about it like that. That's our blending brush. And with this round brush, it has a point. Um, I don't know what size this is, maybe a four. Yeah, this is a four. You probably get away with a six at the largest and a two at the smallest. You don't really want to get a zero or a double zero brush at this point. That's more for if you're getting into extreme detail, like hyper realism. So let's get our four round brush. And I'll show you, for example, this is a brush that is a, a four zero brush, zero, 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 zero. And you can see the difference. It's just uh, insanely small. All right, uh, what's the plan? All right, we've got to cover the whole peel with dots and we want the dots to be one level darker than the area that, the, that, uh, that we're dotting. So if you want to call that a number one lightness, then the dot has to be a number two or three, a number two. And then if you want to call how dark that is a number three, then the dot has to be a number four. So we don't want really dark dots. We just want one shade darker. The dots down there, if, you're, if that's a five, we want those dots to be a six. And uh, by having them only one shade uh, darker, they're going to just appear to be um, not, yeah, I mean, like this, not so obvious. Let's go with a combination of this cadmium red light and cadmium orange. A little bit of white in there. So it's basically the same colors that we're using for the orange, but the the big difference here is that it's going to be darker in, in all of the areas. Okay, now it's a round brush. What I'm going to do, see, I'm twisting it. This is a trick you can do when you're painting. Just the tip and you twist it off. That has the effect, two effects. Number one, you're pulling paint into all of the bristles. And secondly, you're sh it's almost like sharpening your brush, you're sharpening it. You're bringing that point to a sharp point as you can. Okay. And especially if you use more, um, uh, let's say less expensive brushes, sometimes that gets really important because the brushes can fan out, but uh, more, my brushes are not very expensive. So that's a trick that I do to keep them, keep their shape a little bit longer than perhaps otherwise I, I would. Um, I'm going to use a stick like this. This is called a mall stick, M-A-H-L. Mine happens to be a selfie stick that I've modified. And um, so I have this part of the selfie stick. I just flip that down. And now this part here, I wrap on the end of my canvas. You can see, let's put it on the top of my canvas like this. And then but when I extend the stick, the result is the result is that I now can rest my hand on the stick. And this is, makes it much, much easier to um, do small details because you, you, you don't have to paint from your whole arm. You can just paint from your uh, wrist. So I'm going to rest my hand on the mall stick and just make these little dots everywhere. That's going to be too dark for that area. So that was a test. That level of darkness I'd like in the mid tone. It's important to try to make it look like you have random, randomly placed dots. So don't do even lines. Don't do patterns. 
try to keep it nice and random. And another technique that I do is I go into the light areas and pull up some light paint and then go into the dark areas, pull up the dark paint and put them in the, in the light. So that's where you go from light to dark to light to dark. And so you can use, use the paint that's already there. Use the paint that's already on your canvas. Go to the light area, get some light paint when you're making dots and pull them down. If you make a mistake, you can just blend it in. Um, that's the advantage of having the dots be exactly the right color. I guess it's uh, maybe a little bit hard to see. Let me just get even closer. You don't technically need to see the... Well, I'm using darker light colors. I started with a, with a pretty, uh, maybe like a darker, slightly darker. It was a little bit of cadmium light and cadmium uh, orange. Slightly darker, but then what's happened is I'm going with start dark. And as I'm putting these dots in, you end up going into the light areas. And if you do enough dots in the light areas, you're pulling up the light paint. And the light paint is going on your brush. So when the light paint goes on your brush, you go back to the dark areas and you can do some light dots. After you do enough light dots in the dark areas, now your brush is full of dark paint. So you can go back into do some dark dots. So it's like you're going light to dark to light to dark to light to dark. Um, you don't need to get dots over the whole thing, but you know, don't worry about getting hundreds and hundreds of dots. You can just, just get enough to make it look like you have dots everywhere. Let me go with um, something darker now. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that brown in with the cadmium orange. And I'm gonna put some more dots here in the shadows. They don't need to be obvious. They shouldn't be obvious. That's not the texture we're going for. With a strawberry, you can the dots are obvious, but not so much with the orange. Now, let me just grab a, a strawberry reference here to show you. So you can see here that with the strawberry, the dots are really obvious because they're green on top of uh, red. Uh, and those are complementary colors. So. But here, the dots are the same color as the orange. I'm going to zoom back in here now. Well, now that you have dots, darker dots, in most of the orange, the next step, and this is a, this is a pretty cool step, is to think about all of those areas, all of those dots as little valleys. And, uh, and if you have valleys, then you have peaks as well on top of the valleys. So what I like to do, and this is, a, this is up to you, this is an optional step. This is not something you'll find in the reference image. Um, let me just see, yeah. You're not gonna see this in the reference, in the reference image. You don't have it, you just have these dots. But what I like to do is put light dots everywhere as well, not just the dark dots. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool effect, uh, but I'm not gonna use white white. I'm gonna go with this combination of cadmium orange and white. And again, I'm twisting my brush. Twist it to create that point. And then 
Okay, go even lighter. I'm doing these light dots, especially in some of the darker areas. And uh, it just breaks up the patterns, I, I find. Makes it more visually exciting. This works uh, especially well with a lot of the berries, strawberries, raspberries, and so on. Doing a combination of light and dark dots. But it also works with oranges. Again, there are no light dots in the reference um, image, but it's just something that we're doing for fun to uh, give it a little bit more visual appeal. This is of course, uh, your your choice, your call. This is where your individual tastes come into play. Are you more of a photorealist and you want to do something exactly as it is in the photo? Or um, it, do you think it's okay to experiment a little bit and deviate from the original? Uh, that's up to you. And that's why there are no two painters the same. Okay, now while we have the small brush and while we have the light color, we're going to go for some extreme highlights. So let's take a look at this reference image one more time. And we're going to go for some extreme highlights. Here. We're going to go really bright, but, it, but it's not just a, a, a one giant white spot. You can see that there are these darker areas inside the white spot. So I have to be mindful to keep them. And then just a couple more here, here, and here, and up top. And that's gonna give our orange the shine. Also, just on the side here, it looks like there's a secondary light source that you didn't see before. I'm gonna drop that in, just with some, this is not white, this is white plus cadmium orange. Just along the side of the orange, let me do that. I'm gonna go for that right now. So starting with the main highlight, going with titanium white, primarily. So let's say three quarters titanium white. And I'm painting around, this is thick, oops, that was too much thick paint. See, I've just done a huge dollop of thick paint that can happen sometimes not a problem if it's if it's contained enough you can just scoop it up and off got it see how much i put in there uh, accidentally it's not focusing so i just i was able to scoop it up and that thing happens that's uh if you if you can't scoop it up then you can blend it in and then you know, blend it out Paint over it, wipe it with a rag. And so this is thick paint and I'm just kind of dabbing it in because the there's so much paint right now on the canvas that if I try to blend it, it's the, the white's gonna disappear. It's gonna become a, a light orange all of a sudden. So I'm painting around those dark dots and that's giving the orange that texture that we were looking for. Where else? It was down by the side, wasn't it? So we'll just kind of create some texture, thinking about the bumps of the orange. No straight lines, no straight lines in nature. Maybe even slightly more. I don't know if it was a secondary light source or if it was the reflection off of the, the white wall. It's hard to tell what the conditions were from the, uh, the original. So. 
Okay, so we have some, let me just put a couple more highlights around the top part here. And then maybe just create a bit of more of a transition. I'm just kind of dabbing the white because I don't want to ruin the all the dots that we have for this texture. Just doing like this rapid fire dabbing. And that's giving us the texture of the of the peel. Okay, I'll just give you a minute to finish up yours and then we're gonna move on to um, maybe this one and well, well, I'll see this one first and then we'll do that one last. So this is kind of this, when you get into the small brushes like this and you're doing details, uh, there's no end to it. You can spend hours and hours doing the little dots and blending in your transitions. This is where you can really get lost in time. So, and that, that's a good thing. I think there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things in the world that demand immediate attention and, and, uh, very fast. Everything's fast. So painting is one way to slow everything down. It, uh, it requires you to take your time and I, I highly recommend painting to anyone who suffers from uh, a lack of patience because painting is an excellent way to develop your patience. Not only do you, de do you develop patience though, you develop focus and when you paint something that you can be proud of, then you'll develop confidence too. And patience, focus, and confidence are three things that you can carry through your life well beyond the canvas and easel and uh, apply to many situations. So I don't think that's ever, ever a bad thing to have too much patience, or confidence, or focus. And that's why I would recommend art, art and painting to anyone. You know, I know meditation isn't for everyone, but uh, it is a kind of meditation. I could say that. I'm just going to blend in these highlights a little bit more. I'm not totally convinced that I want them there. Okay, so if you're done, then let's carry on to, uh, let's do this one next, I guess. Have a look at the reference, and I'll kind of walk you through what we're gonna go with. So, what are we looking at here? Um, immediately I notice that the darker, the bottom piece is darker than the top piece. So, um, the value of it is darker, it has a lower value, but also the color, there's more, there's either more orange or less white, but we can represent that by, we're gonna put some, um, a little bit of that cadmium red light with the cadmium orange uh, on that bottom piece. And then we have these lines, basically one right down the middle, two and three, these darker lines. We have to choose a color for that. I'm gonna say, let's choose the same color as this here, this cadmium red with a little bit of, uh, of um, Sienna. And then what that's going to do is it's going to, this side will be united with this side. Uh, okay, so this is going to be darker. And then this one has much more white in it. And you notice that there are these white lines going in toward the middle. Lots of white lines. And then there's also the white here. This is the pith of the orange. And uh, we're gonna put that in afterwards with very thick white paint. So don't, you're not worried about that right now. We're just gonna paint the whole thing uh, orange and white, and then a little bit of white there. And this one's gonna be darker. 
that's the plan. You'll notice that the shadows are orange too. We'll put a little bit of red in there and then also some browns to make them duller because we always want your shadow to be duller than the object. Okay, that's the battle plan. Let's, oh, I can stick this in a place for you to be able to see it at the same time. Let me just back up slightly. That's probably good. Okay, um, where to start? Let's go back to our filbert, number 10. I'm using a number 10 filbert. You can use anything, you know, you can use uh, number six square brush if you want. It doesn't really matter. Any medium brush will do. We're using a large brush or medium brush actually, but we're using a bigger brush so that we can't be tempted to work on details. You know, you, you could certainly paint that with a small brush like this, but you're going to be tempted to work on details. That's not a sort of academic way. I often do that in my regular painting. I go straight to the details, um, so I'm certainly guilty of it, but let's let's try to do it the proper way this time. Um, top one's lighter. We're going to go with that titanium white mixed with cadmium orange and a little bit of cad yellow. Let's just uh, let's keep it nice and vibrant. So I'm gonna go with a cadmium with this light color toward the outside. Now it's, you can't really see it here, but I know that with oranges they're darker in the center. And then as you go out toward the outside, they get lighter. And if you paint it that way, then it looks very translucent. So that's what we're gonna do, even though it's not here, uh, but I'll walk you through it. So this lighter color, it's white and yellow and orange. I'm gonna go all along the outside with that, even lighter with that, I would say. And then we're gonna go darker as we go toward the middle. Just painting the this one piece, I'm not doing all of it yet. You don't want to go too dark toward the middle because you want to save your dark line for the for those lines between the pieces. So I'm putting the two different colors down, and then I'm going to worry about blending them in just a moment. First, I wipe off all of the excess color off my brush. like that. Uh, so now I have no color on my brush and I'm going to just make these small circles and strokes to blend these colors together. If you accidentally pull some of this, that's not a, it's not a big deal at all. But you don't need to go right to the edge. We're going to be painting over that with white. If you want to, just for practice, you can, but you don't need to go right to the edge. And then I can just blend these colors together. So I think this is a good example of the, you don't need to use your reference to try to paint something exact. You can just use it as a, as, a, as a starting point, as a jumping off point. So I'm gonna go a little bit more of this you know, cadmium orange. And it's just slightly darker toward the top here. That, that's an uh, oil stain, don't worry about that, but um, slightly darker toward the top. So let me just make that indication and at the bottom. and then blend it in. For the best blending technique, you want to, of course, go parallel. I wasn't doing that just a second ago, but I reminded myself that I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be teaching you or showing you my bad habits. I should be teaching you the way that it's supposed to be done. Uh, yeah, that's so that's one piece. 
it's going to be basically the same color uh, for the next slice, but there's going to be this line here between the slices. And this is kind of where the planning comes in because you can either go light and then draw the line and light and draw the line and just do it sequentially. Or you could paint the whole thing light and then draw the lines in afterwards. Or you could draw the lines in and then paint just the light parts. Um, there's no really one way to do it. You can just try to figure it out on your own by um, seeing what works for you. But I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna do the line right now. So I'm gonna go back to that small brush. I think it was a four brown and Add red light. I'm going to twist it to get a nice line. So I'm just and I'm going to paint this line down. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker than it needs to be because I'm going to end up painting over some of it when I do the next slice. other one while I'm here. So I'm just basically drawing at this point. That's I'm not trying to mold anything. I'm not trying to create form. I'm just creating these darker lines give it some contrast. All right, now with those darker lines in, I'm gonna go back to these, this color here, which is uh, white plus cadmium orange and a little bit of yellow. I'm using the side of my brush, not the flat of the brush, but the side. And that's because the it's a narrow space that I have to paint in. This one's a lot lighter. There's a lot more uh, pith here. So let me just add some extra white there. Again, I'm not really getting into details and just making notes, making observations about the value. What parts are lighter, what parts are darker. You know, there's a major white strip down here that I could have put in, but let me get to that in a moment. Um, yeah. Yellow. Cadmium orange, titanium white. I'm gonna paint over this whole thing very with very thick paint, thick white paint in a moment. And this slice down here was slightly darker, so I'm gonna go just with straight orange. I like that color, so I'm going to pull some of it up into this one. That's maybe a little too dark. That's fine. I'll correct it in a moment. So I've got straight orange here. And now I'm going to knock it back. Remember, it's important to go too far so you know where the line was. And then you can, you can bring it back. If you don't do it that way, what happens is you might think you're going too far, but you're not going far enough. But if you go too far, you know that you've gone too far. So you can just bring it back to where it's acceptable. So that's what I did. I went too dark. So now I can bring it back. 
lighter around the outside. We'll give it more of a translucent look. I don't know what we're going to be painting next Sunday in this in the paint class, but uh, yeah, we'll have to make. If you have suggestions, you can leave them in the comments. I wouldn't mind uh, teaching you how to paint translucent things like grapes or water drops or the iris of an eye. Um, these things that are see-through, translucent. But you can see already, just with a darker center and a lighter outside, it's already starting to become, uh, give, have that appearance of the translucent. All right, this is um, this top piece here. We have this dark area, obviously has to be fixed. So I'm just gonna use the flat of my brush Blend it in. If you do really, really mess up, just take your rag and, and wipe off a whole area. That's the beauty of the oil paint. You can just wipe off entire areas. Uh, okay, cool. That looks like it's gonna be Fine for the white areas now. That we're gonna get to in just a moment. Um, by the way, for those of you, uh, if you are enjoying this, um, please do know that I have a Patreon that I've just set up a, um, a couple of weeks ago. So in that Patreon, I it's um, it's a subscription service, and there are different levels or tiers. And depending on what level you get, uh, you get different bonuses or awards. One of the things in all of the tiers, I have exclusive content that you can't find on my uh, YouTube or TikTok. I have digital downloads like wallpapers and coloring pages. Um, also, I have uh, a print club. And uh, every week, sorry, every month you get a, a new print that's not available in my store. But uh, if you do want something from my store, by joining my Patreon, you get 20% off anything in my store. Um, any tips on pulling acrylic paint off when heavily hand heavy handed? It it's all timing. So uh, when it comes to acrylic paint, if you if you put too much on, get just get it off as quick as you can, however you want. Um, with your brush, ideally, it depends on the timing. So acrylic dries so quickly. Uh, scoop it with your brush if you can. If you can't, what you might want to do is just wait it out. Let it dry. Then you'll take your palette knife and you can actually dig it, dig the paint off like you're, uh, like you're peeling an orange or peeling a potato or something. And you can even get in there. You can very carefully peel it off. Um, but of course with acrylic, because it does dry so quickly, you can just paint over, over top. You don't have to pull it off unless it's too textured. Um, yeah, so I was saying, by the way, if you if you uh, would like to support me on Patreon, please do uh, check it out, starting at $2.50 uh, a month for all of the uh, bonus content. And uh, also on my YouTube videos, I put your name, um, depending on the tier as well. So for those of you watching um, who who are, are already patrons, thank you so much. I really do appreciate uh, your support and uh, helping me do this kind of thing on a daily basis. And it really is appreciated. I have the top of this bottom uh, slice that I haven't yet done, and that's basically because it's gonna be white. So I'll just... Yeah, yeah, well that's that's acrylic paint with slow drying medium. Your paint is drying pretty fast. That's um. If blending is your thing, then you have to move to oils. If you don't want to move to oils, because let's say you, you're you worried about the ventilation issue or anything like that, um, one way around it is not to use thinners. I don't use any thinners. I have linseed oil, but I don't have turpentine or any of that stuff. I don't, I don't I never really got into it. Um, but the other thing you could do is use, they have water soluble oils. So instead of linseed oil, um, I don't I don't exactly know what it is, but uh, you can use that. I think Windsor Newton makes them water soluble oils, and then you can mix those with your acrylics as well. Uh, okay, let's turn our attention back to this area here. 
Yeah, yeah, the water-soluble oil paints. It's, it's Winsor Newton that makes them, and you can mix them with water and with your acrylics. Thank you, Virginia. So let's return back to this area. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, of course, we need the white parts, the, the pith, and that that's... In, and now we're into details, so let's do that. Uh, I have the round number four, same one we were using for this one, for the dots. Oh, Golden makes them now too? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I haven't painted with acrylics for so long. And that, uh, yeah, it's been uh, translucent painting. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I think maybe next week we'll do that. It might be grapes or maybe an eye. Here, I'll show you. This was um, on uh, one of the Patreon um, prints of the month. So this is the kind of translucency that I'm talking about. So maybe we can do that next week. We'll do a bunch of grapes. I'm gonna stay away from uh, human subjects, uh, portrait painting for the time being. And uh, I think probably, oh, Cobra, I don't know Cobra. Yeah, I, I know Golden, I've, I've had Golden. That was what I, when I painted with acrylic, I painted with Golden, but uh, I didn't uh, I didn't know they had one. See, a Golden Acrylics, they, may, they just bought a company called uh, Williamsburg, which makes quite good oil paint. So I thought, oh, have they have they started making water soluble oils too? I didn't know. I'm gonna get this titanium white, and I'm just patting it down with this number four brush. It's gonna be really thick on my brush, like it's distorting the shape. Oh, no problem. Yeah, just um, you you can see the replay as well, so. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. I'm gonna go with uh, all the way around the outside with this white. Try not to make your line too straight or too even. Remember when it comes to nature, there are no straight lines, so a lot of this these areas where it's like this, where it goes thick and thin like that. Um, that's kind of what you want. It's going to look more like pith. Even though you're just using white, because there's already orange down, it's going to mix slightly. So uh, that's good. That's something you want. Now I'm just going to go all the way around the outside. They have some uh, white lines inside as well. We are going to put those, but let me just put a few more uh, around the outside. The The white on the outside of the slices is a lot thicker than the white on the inside. So when you do the inside part, try to do a thinner line if you can. Thinner and smoother. Just have some thick white paint here and I'm not pushing too hard you don't want to blend it with the orange you want to keep it white as much as you can so that's pretty much it oh thank you so much Virginia I appreciate you saying that and uh, and for being here okay so that's the first one 
and let's do the inside of this piece now. Now, what you're going to notice with the the lines is they all kind of go not toward a center point, but rather imagine a little circle like this. So these lines will go to the part of the circle. Don't make it too regular. That's the important thing. If you make it too regular, it's gonna, it's not going to look natural. So I'm gonna have, uh, you can see there's a kind of a major white line comes down this way. And you don't need to go all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. You can kind of stop and break it up. Um, make some of them thicker, thinner. So I'm going to draw that or paint that little circle like that. See, just there. It's not as white as the outside pulp. And uh, you kind of want to make it a little more subtle than that. So all the lines are going to stop when, you get, when they get to that part. And you don't have to draw full lines either. See how I'm just mixing it up. Some are lighter and darker. So it's like, how often do you go back to your palette? Um, this one, I'm actually gonna make it quite light. Wipe off some of that older orange stuff. Get back to get back to the white areas. So this is kind of the, one of those areas where you can just spend a lot of time if you want to. Um, so this is going to be a little bit too dark up here. I want it to be more translucent, so I'm going to go lighter with some yellow. Across the top. Um, now this slice here is pretty much all white, so it's going to get a huge chunk on the end of my brush and then don't blend it in too much. That's going to be important, otherwise you just have to use more. So I'm basically just uh, allowing the paint to be really thick and using the texture of the paint. So this is uh, not impasto exactly, but nearly impasto. Impasto is an oil paint technique that really takes advantage of the wonderful um, texture that oil paint has. It's, you can create this sort of thickness. You can, there are all different kinds of uh, additional substances that you can add to your oil paint as well if you want to play with texture. So for example, um, a company called Gamblin out of Portland, Oregon makes something that's cold wax medium 
and uh, this is really cool. I haven't used it yet. They, uh, they work very generously sent me this sample, but so this wax is, uh, I mean, it's, it's literally wax. You would mix it in with your paint to create texture. And if you want to really carve out different area is, uh, there are lots of different things. Acrylic has a whole bunch of different things you can, you can add as well. Nepheline gel, um, you can add sand, a number of different. So yeah, I'm just getting a, an error message. Hopefully my, uh, my power cord's gonna hold up. Okay, um, yeah, let's get back to this. I'm gonna go a little bit darker uh, here in between the slices. So that's gonna be that red and brown together. If I had a little blue on, on my palette, I would put it in there, but I don't, um, just to completely desaturate these colors. I'm gonna go between the these slices, the deepest ones. Okay, let's go back to the whites now. And uh, it's the same thing. So we see a lot of white on the inside of this slice. And there's already enough orange and yellow on the painting. And remember, this is oil, so this is all still wet. So I'm just adding white. Um, to not uh, blending it in at all using the texture that there's the natural texture of the of the oil paint and on the inside here too Okay, and uh, and then let's let's jump down to this last slice now. Get the medium part, uh, sorry, the middle part. This is the advantage of having oil. It's not dried, so the white is not exactly white. You can see that I still it's picking up some of the browns from that initial drawing. It's picking up, you know, quite a lot of the of the orange as well. That's going to really come in handy. Let's see if you have, if your whites are too white, they don't, don't quite look natural. So, and I'll go all the way down. Having a lot of variation here. No line, no straight lines. Wipe off that, get some fresh white stuff going. Put it on there nice and thickly. Okay, now some of the uh, interior details. Again, it's like a little ring and then I don't wanna overdo it here. Just kind of tap, tap in the details. You can see how it's darker in the center. And that's gonna be good for us. Always makes it look slightly more translucent. Okay, 
and then just on the side here too. There's some pith on the side. Um, okay, so that's, I mean, you have, I think you have enough of an idea that you would be able to just carry on uh, on your own time and finish it up or, you know, you, you could even leave it loose, but I think the, the general idea is there. You can see how I was able to do that. Um, so now let's just move on to this lower slice. And you can see that the whoever has arranged this uh, image, they've pulled off almost all of the 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 pith. All the, you know how um, a slice of orange has that skin. You can pull it off and and it reveals. It's like. So they pulled off that skin off the individual piece, and you'd see the inside here. So the idea is going to be, we're going to put the orange down first, and then noting that this is slightly lighter, we'll mix some, some, some yellow in there. Here we'll have some red, and at the very end, with thick white paint on top and add in these stripes. So, um, here, I got a little bit white on my brush. I'm going to just lighten this up here so it's slightly rounder. You can always make lots of adjustments. That's why oil paint can take so long as you see something. It's like I said at the beginning, you ask questions, then you answer those questions, and then you ask more. Um, everything you do asks another question. It's like having a conversation with the, uh, the painting. You hear artists talk like that all the time, that the painting asked them to do something. It sounds really weird to say that, but uh, unless you have spent hours and hours doing a painting like yeah you, may, you might not know that feeling of like oh it's asking sort of asking me to, to go back into this area there's something it's it's hard to put your finger on it sometimes it's like a feeling it's, you know you're you're using intuition in a way um and you can you can develop that intuition you can hone it over the course of hundreds or thousands of paintings painted just sort of know when an area is done or not done. You know to go back into an area. Okay, let's go to this uh, slice down here. We're going to go back to that number 10, that uh, filbert brush that we were using. I'm going to go with a general orange all the way across. And that orange is going to be cadmium orange for the most part. And some cadmium yellow, and then of course, this titanium white. Amazing high tint, highly opaque. The workhorse of the art of, uh, of the palette, titanium white. So uh, let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna cover the whole thing kind of with the same general color. Maybe a little bit too much red in there. I don't know why I'm seeing red. I'm just gonna wipe off my brush. Go for some more white. Okay. Um, I need this slice to be sufficiently different from the orange up here. Otherwise, it's not gonna look like it's in front of the orange. So going slightly lighter than I need to, so it really stands out in front. I'm just going to paint the whole thing the same color. And then we'll get into nuances and differences uh, in a moment. But um, so just across the top, I'll go with a little bit more of this cadmium yellow. Just slightly dull 
as it is right now. When you have too much white, it uh, tends to desaturate and makes it dull. And then you just see a little bit more the darker uh, toward the bottom here. And then of course, if you put it in just right in the middle, that makes the whole thing slightly translucent. Blend that in. And now I'm just gonna blend this in. I'm not worrying about all of that extra brown. We're gonna cover the, the background uh, in a few moments as kind of a final flourish. So I'm just blending this in. Using the width of my brush, trying to get my brush as close to parallel as possible and just very, very lightly making those indications or strokes. So the, that's, there's not much to it other than that. It's, it's pretty uh, straight on to the light source. So, I mean, we could, let's, let's go ever so slightly. A little bit darker around here. So it looks like it's kind of bending away. Oh, what, like bending this way away from the light source. Uh, but other than that, let's now return to the detailing brush on number four round brush that we were using before. I'm going to go with, uh, with white again, same way we did with the other slices. Thick white. I'm just going to... Uh, big chunk of it. And then make these light, light lines. Um, kind of planning it out so it's going to be radiating from the center. Mm. You don't want to blend these lines too much, uh, if at all. of dots you don't need to represent all of the all of the lines in your uh, reference image just some of them Going white and yellow here I kind of radiate toward or away from the center, not toward. Um, it's an important to follow the shape of the object with your brush strokes. It's a kind of technique called contour hatching. And uh, I've just been working on a uh, shading video that I'll be releasing on YouTube very, very soon has all the different kinds of shading that you can do with drawing. And one of the crucial ones is called contour hatching. It's kind of a cousin to uh, cross hatching, but you follow the direction of the object in your, in your contour lines. And that's what we're doing here with this painting. even lighter lines, which means even thicker lines.
Yeah, for more uh, drawing and painting tutorials, content, um, please do check out the rest of my YouTube um, videos and, uh, and also TikTok. And then if you want exclusive content and where you really get into uh, other things, longer tutorials and so on, um, I've also now started a Patreon account. So um, if you uh, are interested, interested in that, that's Mark Liam Smith uh, on Patreon as well. And I have a whole bunch of other things too, like digital downloads and discounts from my store and a print club, and lots of different things. So yeah, happy, happy for your support if you're interested in, uh, in that. And um, if you're not interested necessarily in making art, or rather just um, having art or appreciating art that way, I have over 40 of my paintings available in my online shop. And uh, they start at about 25 bucks. So, and I ship all over the world. So if you're interested in having some of my paintings on your wall, but uh, you don't necessarily have a painting level budget, yeah, I have prints available. Um, and then other things too, merch, phone cases, and pillows, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, please check it out if you're interested. I'm just doing that really thick white paint here and making these lines. Getting close now to the edge. Let's deal with these shadows so you don't have to uh, worry about them afterwards. Here, I'm going to just make this a little bit lighter. Okay, we'll, we'll do the shadows now. There's one here. I guess uh, backward C shape, and then there's a little, little one under here, and then just down here. Um, so for the shadow, we'll go with that Sienna and some Cad Orange. The shadows are always going to be darkest, uh, closer to the object, and then as you get further away from the object, they get a little bit lighter. And typically, you don't want to have a really hard line unless the light source is very strong. And so you have to blend that line out. And that's why I'm going to switch from the small brush to this larger one, just so I don't get stuck on details. That's one under there, two is here, a little brown and orange. It comes around and again, I'm trying to make the edges of the shadow Blend it in a little bit. I think it's going to be appropriate now to just get some regular white, just titanium white, and create a little bit of a ground so that I can blend that shadow in. Also, there's this line here that I want to get rid of. So, going titanium white. I'm not mixing it with anything. I could, but it'll mix already with the sienna that's there. So I'm going to go titanium white and just kind of scrub it in so that it gets rid of a lot of the, you see how, how that's what it looks like for my brush, but then it's, it just all of a sudden becomes this nice uh, warm brown. is going to be the shadow color under here. I 
I'm gonna blend those shadows right here. We don't want the the shadow lines to be to be too uh, prominent or or outlined unless you're shining a very bright light on something, which generally speaking you don't. Let's carry on around the side here too. I guess the direction of light is coming from the left side. They're not going to have shadows on this left side. They're all going to be on the right side, but we still have to paint the white, the background. This is where artistic choice comes into play. You know, you could make the oranges really pop by going with a background that has um, some blue in it, like ultramarine blue. If you mix some ultramarine blue in with the white and it, the white would be a lot cooler. And also if you let the sienna, the, the background, if you let that dry and then added some ultramarine blue in, in your white, so it was a cooler white, then the, blue and the white would kind of clash with each other because they're complementary colors and uh, that would make the oranges look even more orange by contrast so around that way just a moment my, my phone battery is going to die uh, sorry about that if i lost you hopefully i'm back i was having some issues with my power cord there Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna rough in with this wider brush. I'll rough in the background all the way around. Light's coming in from the left side, so it should be slightly brighter on this side. Um, it doesn't need to be, you could have it even if you wanted. And it's up to you, you could take your time with this. I'm just doing it very quickly. Uh, we're gonna have to do this leaf as well. What color is a leaf? We'll go with a couple of different greens, a darker one and a lighter one. Maybe for the darker one, we might not even go with a green, maybe like a turquoise. Um, uh, that usually is a good green. If I mix turquoise with black, I don't know. This is just titanium white. I'm filling in the background. Really rough, but you can you could take your time with it. Okay, uh, that should be fine. Let's rub that off with my finger. So for the green leaf, yeah, let's go with, um, I don't think in the description I told you what greens to use. So if you have any greens on hand, uh, yeah, just go for that. I'm gonna go with 
a green called Bright Green Lake. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. Bright Green Lake. This is a Series 1 from Michael Harding. It happens to be an opaque green. It's got a lot of titanium white in it already. I, I, I like using it for the highlights. So um, for the leaf, I'm going to go with a highlight down the spine. Uh, and just along this side where the light's hitting it the most. And then, because the leaf is kind of goes up like an M shape, right? Up, down, up, down. And on the two ups, you're going to have a nice light line. And then on the downs, you're going to go darker. And for the darker areas, I'm going to mix that bright green lake with a color called Thalo turquoise. I mix just a when you mix bright green lake and then this turquoise together, they it just has a the result is a nice dark green. So we'll go right down the middle, all the way to the stem. Don't want to be touching the orange. Um, if I can avoid it, I will. Because the greens and the oranges don't like each other. They are not complementary colors, but one's definitely a cool color and one's definitely a warm color. So those uh, they tend not to like each other. They just they will turn gray. They will turn muddy. A little bit more of that bright green lake. So I'm just imagining an M shape basically where the bright green lake is at the top of the M and this turquoise, the darker ones at the bottom of the M. So it goes up and down, up and down like that. That's going to give us that rounded form. put in some white highlights as well on this leaf to kind of give it a glossy look. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. So let's go for that right now. Uh, I'm going to go back to the small one that we have. Make sure I wipe it well. So a little bit of white and just along the tops of that M. You know, it goes up, down there, and then that spine. There's a, there are a couple of little details here in the leaf that we can try to put in just by allowing the brush to blend all of those colors together. And then for this stem, I suppose we should do this too. Uh, we'll go with brown, brown and white. Brown and white, you can't go wrong with uh, those. Or sort of a wood color. All right, there's the brown. And then for the white, I'm gonna, because the light's coming in from the left, it's gonna be on the left side of the stem here. Get a little line down there. You don't need to blend it. It's gonna read three-dimensional enough as it is. Okay, um, that I think is going to do it for us. Just uh, darken that up down there. Now I'm just going to kind of scan around the area and see if there are any areas that need to be touched up. Maybe the shadow here. 
of the stem. Uh, if I went too quickly this time around, please uh, do let me know in the comments. I'll try to slow things down next time. Or uh, then also remember that I will be posting this video immediately to uh, to YouTube, so you'll be able to watch the replay and go back and try it again and practice at your own speed and in your own time. Hopefully that'll be good. I think that's going to be drawing to a close. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, for those of you who have stuck with me this uh, about two hours or so, I guess it is. I really do appreciate your time and uh, joining me on this paint class. Next week, we're going to do something mm, similar. Let's probably go with something like a translucent uh, grapes or something like that maybe water that would be uh, pretty cool to show you guys how to how to paint water or water drops or maybe pearls something shiny i don't know we'll see how it goes but that's going to be it for me tonight thank you so much uh, i really do appreciate your time and for being here and thank you for supporting me on all my platforms whether it's TikTok, youtube facebook twitter uh, i have all of the usual things and uh, once again, please do join me on Patreon if you feel like um, supporting me that way. If not, uh, and you're interested in one of my prints, please do go to markliamsmith.com. I have over 40 of my paintings available in print form. Um, that's another way um, that uh, I'd be very happy to receive your support. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday.